Yep. Hey, welcome everybody to another uh, episode of Monster Hustle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, with Janet and James. Yes, I'm Janet. He's James. I thought I was Janet. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you are Janet. That's in right. case if you're wondering. Silly of me, yeah. I mean, we always have to, you know, clear that up. Yes, yes. This is part of our Monster Hustle playlist. Well, it will be when I go back and edit it later. Oh, boy. Uh, but yeah, you're watching us live right now, and if you're not, you're just catching the archives later on. Yeah, and Monster Hustle is in reference to our uh, our alter egos, Janet the and Grim Gory, uh, which are horror hosts, and we host a horror-hosted uh, Friday night live streaming show called The Mummy, the Monkeys, Harry Scary Hangout. Yes, so you can check that out if you like on our Facebook page. We are The Mummy and the Monkey on Facebook. And uh, yeah, we try to do live streaming on our YouTube here from time to time. And we will be uploading some more videos during the week. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get into, uh, yeah, putting more content out there. But... Oh, and, and immediately following our uh, Facebook live show, we switch over to YouTube around midnight and do the Mummy and the Monkeys no show after party for about an hour. We just oh. talk about what's going what went on on the show. Uh, answer questions and stuff like that uh, because that, again that's another q and a sort of a live streaming of thing we do on facebook so yes yeah, so from our live from our facebook show friday nights then we jump over to youtube for the after party show right. where we talk more about behind the scenes or whatever um, or, I mean, or whatever if know. people ask us questions we'll, we'll talk with them it's yeah. more interactive but yeah we have some cool finds we wanted to show you guys so this is a haul video a flea market haul video it's our a haul video yeah the a stands for what janet the a stands for awesome it's an awesome haul. <laughs> you didn't, yes, you're, you awesome didn't hear haul. us wrong it's not, it's a haul okay a haul right for an awesome haul well, that's right see very clever and a lot of vintage not. a lot of vintage finds today, yeah, yeah but it's a lot of smaller stuff Ooh, shoot oh that's okay just so the, the flea, so that's good so the, the woo. <laughs> so the flea market uh, that we usually go to in the summertime, which is open on uh, Saturday and Sundays, mm -hmm. uh, you know, through the whole summer, um, they sort of condense the dates to just one the first weekend of each uh, month in the winter. Yeah, yeah. During the winter months, there's not a lot of flea market stuff going on, unless if they have it indoors. We're in Northeast Ohio. That's right. It's it's cold outside, baby. So. Uh, so yeah, the first weekend of every month, there is a flea market nearby that will have um, some buildings where you can go and shop indoors. Man, and, this, oh. and they had a lot of, um, we found a lot of vintage things, and there were a lot of antique dealers this time around that had vintage stuff. So uh, I don't know what you want to show first. Um, well, uh, let's just... Or if you want just, to talk about let's just say, some of the items. Let's just say that we were, you, we, we, we meant to get up early. We had a heck of a weekend. Oh, some people are like, hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 Bill. help you found a lot of awesome stuff. Well, you you let us know what you yeah, think. Yeah, let us know if you think it's awesome, Bill. You're going to see it here in a little bit. Yeah, um, but we were uh, technically a little late uh, getting there. It starts at like 6 in the morning. We got there around um, 9. Well, I think on Facebook they, they put that it started at 8, but there's mm. early birds. And then for the people setting up there... That, that, yeah, they come in right. at 6 and 7 What time did we get there? Is it 9? We got there almost at 9. Yikes. Yeah, we were a little behind. Normally, we get there early so we yeah. can, like, look at everything first. Yeah, or, or get the good stuff first. Or get the good stuff first. That's you how know? it works, right? But anyway, the first, we went in there. You were look, looking at some costume jewelry. Did you find anything of the jewelry that you wanted to talk about? Um, I did find some cool stuff. Let's hmm. see. I found, there was one vendor that had costume jewelry fill a bag for $5. Some of this stuff I think I could lot up and put on Poshmark. Mm. Um, I have to check to see if this is real silver. But, God. like, this is a leather armband, like, leather bracelet that looks like they took a silver spoon and, like, put it on there. So it's kind of weird. So there's that. There's, um, I found, like, in this bag there's some vintage rhinestones. Vintage rhinestone pieces. Nice. Um, some charm bracelets that look like they're signed by someone. I don't think the charm bracelets are real <laughs> by any means. Like, I don't think it's real gold or silver, but, um, there's some of these charms that have, like, letters and stuff. So I have to look them up to see what they are, because I know some of the charm bracelets could be good depending on who makes them. How charming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. And some gothy jewelry that I thought I could put online. Like, um, there was, there were some choker necklaces in here that had spiders and skulls on them. Mm. This is like a little bracelet that has like seashells on it, kind of like a mermaid theme. 
So some of that, like some of the costume jewelry, even though it's junk jewelry, can still sell. You could put them as lots online. Sometimes if it's like cute or stylish or made by a certain company, there's people that will still buy them on Poshmark. Like this one still has a tag on it. There's a there's a bracelet in here with a tag. So yeah, this is all stuff I have to go go through in more detail later on. But five bucks for a bag of junk jewelry Not that um, I might be able to double or triple on. Nice. Depending on what it is. And then right. um, and then we went to this other fella that had a, had a bunch of cool stuff. It was letting it go for real cheap, I thought. Um, he was. He was. His pricing was really fair. Yeah, I saw this. I picked this up. Uh, Janet, I asked her if she wanted it and or something like that. You know, was she getting anything she could do with it? If it was something, but it's a, it's a tea set. Uh, probably Jap Jap you know, Japanese tea set. It's, you know, made uh, in Japan. Made in Japan. It's a, it's a little girl's, like, toy tea set, but yeah. it's all ceramics. Toy China tea set. So it's a China tea set, but it does say made in Japan. And the way the packaging is, um, this yeah. looks like... Probably early 60s. Yeah, it's really neat. So this would be considered mid-century, vintage. Um, they have that pre-anime style look to them. Too. Yeah, it has that kind of anime artwork on mm -hmm. it. But it was, uh, you you could put like big eyes in the listing because they made some dolls and other Japan toys like this. If you look, there's like little, little big-eyed cartoony girls on it. It's kind of cute. Um, the pricing's all over the place on these vintage toy tea sets, but this has the original box, so that should add some value to it yeah, and really make cool. it look more more collectible. And I, it looks like it has all the pieces, so that's cool. Well, uh, at the same place, I started looking. I started picking up stuff. I started out with uh, this little package of uh, rain, like plastic uh, reindeer, like blow molded reindeer from uh, Woolworths. Aww. And one of the heads popped off, but it's easy to put that back on if you, if you bought it, if you wanted to take it out. Look, it was it was 89 cents originally, and it was reduced to 20 cents ultimately. 40 cents to 20 cents. At Woolworths. Yeah. It has the old Woolworths now, tag. I, I bought a Santa head from the same guy. It's around here somewhere. I haven't found it yet, but when I find it, I'll show it to you. It should be in one of the pockets. We'll find out. And then I picked up these really cool, like, I thought they were neat trucker oh, hats. Oh, look at that! This cab snapback. It's, it's the got, old logo. It's got the Miller. I, I, there was there were guys there buying Cleveland stuff. I'm surprised they didn't pick these up. Wow. But it's the foam inside snapback trucker hat. And this one was just funny. What's that say? I go to Fud Pucker Electrical Company. Electric Company. <laughs> Fud Pucker. What a name. That's wow. right. Now, that's okay to show on YouTube, right? It's not a swear but word. But it's another, it's another <laughs> snapback foam inside. It's got a stamp on there, too. What's it say? Someone's work hat? Does it have the What's name of it? What's that stamp say in there? Um, compliments oh. of Sylvania Lighting Equipment. Oh, Sylvania, yeah. They're a lighting Fall River, Mass. Fall River, Massachusetts. Fall River, Massachusetts, yeah. Fud Pucker. That's <laughs> what funny. What a name. <laughs> I mean, someone who's just going to want that just probably for the name on there. That's really funny. And uh, also, um, I started picking up some posters he had, and I wound up buying this whole box of posters. I think I just dropped 20 bucks to the guy. So show the whole box. Oh, my gosh. There's, like, <laughs> There's a lot of posters in here. Box of, he just wanted to get rid of all of them. Now, just, what, what were the posters? Let me you show know? you. Well, yeah, there's a lot of different stuff. So he had these small ones that were not in this box. But uh, they were, I think they're like music, like probably hung up in a music store maybe. I don't know. J Lo. Mr. Hollywood says, "What up, guys? How are you tonight?" Hey, Mr. Hollywood, we're doing good. Thanks for this watching one, us. This one he wanted five bucks for long. I remember this poster. Who's that it's, lady? It says locker room. This is a really great '80s image, man. This is like the big I, hair. I don't even know. She's got a Reebok on. The it, old Reebok. It just says locker room because when you, when you walk <laughs> into a locker room, that's what you see. All, all the guys know that. You know, that's hey, how you doing? <laughs> and then there's really cool Britney Spears ones, which I thought somebody would want. Vintage Britney Spears. Looks like she's doing like a left cheek sneak there. Uh -huh. Oh, jeez. Oops, I did it again. Oops, she did it again. So I thought something like that could be could sell pretty good. What years on that? Probably late 90s. 98, probably? It says 2001. 2001, so okay. Yes, but this one might be 80s or, or mid 90s. And Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, J-Lo. I showed that one already. Look at Young Earl. J-Lo. Earl's sitting over here, our cat, and he's looking really cute. He's like, you guys aren't playing with me. And I think this is tempting him too much. i got to put this <laughs> over here. But wait, there's really uh, some other cool stuff. But wait, there's more. Lots of posters. So yeah, I, I, these are really cool. These are like movie posters. Look at this. Track down. Is that a Western? Uh, what, if, what if it was your sister? What if street punks grabbed her? What if they sold her into slavery? What if no one would help? Not even the cops, the law, or the courts. One man had that that decision. What he did was illegal against the rules. 
of the system, but it was the only way he knew how. And there was only one kid willing to help. Track down. Track down. Look, starring I've it, never seen that movie. I've never heard of it. I'm sure our friend Pete knows all about it. But um, yeah, it has Eric Estrada. He's the kid. He's gonna help. Uh, it's a vigilante type movie. I, let me look. I love those types of movies. That looks, and especially the 70s and 80s ones. That looks On good. my phone, it's That's, showing all the writing in reverse. But yeah, Jim it's Mitchum. for the movie Tracked Out. Yeah, and then there's this other one with Gabe Kaplan from Welcome Back, Cotter. Do you well, need help with the posters? Yeah, I want this one to flip over there. Nobody's Perfect. Poe Buddies Never Effect with Gabe Kaplan. Who else is in this one? Starring Gabe, Gabe Kaplan, Alexis Carreras, Robert Klein, and Susan Clark. Oh, cool. Some of these are cool. Yeah, that's that. That's those, yeah. these might be really good. I mean, definitely maybe five bucks. Usually the movie post. Yeah, I mean these are small. I, I gotta find the technical name for these smaller posters because they're lobby cards. Would that be cards. called one sheet? Well, I, I don't know if the one sheets are or a certain are those size. a certain size? It could be the bigger posters. I bet there's definitely a, probably a separate name for those, and we know who to ask about that. Yeah, we'll we'll ask we'll have to ask what our movie got? buff friend. This is another one I was I've seen this before, but the one I saw uh, at a different place was all tore up. But this is a W. Actually, I might even have bought it. I might have two of these now. But it's a 1979 uh, WMMS poster, and it's got like a lot of um, like local companies. A lot of local there. stuff. There might even be like the Ghoul or Big Chuck and Little John on here. I remember seeing something funny on here or Superhost, but there is a Cleveland uh, horror host. I'm pretty sure there is. But there, but there's all kinds. But of... But it looks like it was all drawn by an artist. Uh, drawn by an artist and not by a, a, a shoe repairman. Well, it wasn't like <laughs> this was before computers and Photoshop, and it looks like oh. it was all like you know hand drawn. It was from the seventies. Okay. So it's kind of neat. They still draw stuff. I still draw stuff. Well, you here. still draw stuff, but a lot of stuff is done on the computer now. So. Look, they, Hitler's suicide, and it's kind of Hitler getting his brains blown. <laughs> Jeez. Woo. Why are they going all there? Ronald Reagan. Uh, well, it, it must be all like historical stuff that happens on, this side on certain it. days. Che Guevara dies. Wilt the Stilt, 1936, his VJ day. Um, it's all over the place. It's weird. It's a weird event. Very function. odd. But um, that, that, yeah, I just wanted to. You got Miller Country? Oh, boy. That's right, honey. I'm going to buy you a beer there in the hay, man. <laughs> Rope you up some honey. Wait, there, there's some there's some other good ones. Oh my goodness! Oh, I gotta be smarter than the poster. Oh. Yeah, I don't um, really mess with posters. I don't either, but I'm sure you know. Just ship them in a tube. They're, they're probably they're gonna be hard to take pictures of. That's the only thing. The I'm not condition's really... a little rough. On oh, a few of these. Oh, but I found the Santa head. It it popped up. Look you found that. the Santa head from Woolworths. The Woolworths Santa head. Look at that. Oh, Christmas is saved. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Somebody decapitated me, but that's okay, boys and girls. My head will deliver the presents anyway. Ah, Ooh. Floating Santa head from Woolworths. I ain't got nobody. Literally. Ho ho ho. Anyway, sorry, but not. Oh, this geez. one, so this, I wanted this poster um, because it's, it's it's really, it's a good one, I think anyway. But it's a Patriots poster. Like the New England Patriots? Exactly. The, but a yeah, you got to be really careful. It's NFL issued. It's old. I mean, this is like from the 70s. This is nice. This is, this, I think some Patriots fan is going to want to frame this and hang it up in their, in their football man cave. Probably. That's a good one. That's super good. Probably. Um, this one I thought was really cool. It's another Miller. High Life poster, and it's all car it's all drawn by an artist. <laughs> all hand, but it's a comic book. Look at it. it's even got some blank in there. I don't know what that's all about, but it's pretty wild. Again, that whole comic thing about book style. How beer gets you gets you hooked up? I don't know. Never worked for me. Hey, anyway, they sell beer. I guess never worked for me. Um, there's just not enough beer to be with me. Let's see, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. I don't know what that is, but some here, event, the the some top. Pittsburgh hold, event. Hold the, the bottom, yeah. Some, I so for people that are into cars, maybe. 1993, you could let it go. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, it's a visual. It's a cool visual effect. That's not CGI. That was real practical <laughs> effects. Real there. special effects. Oh yeah, genuine light, baby. Drink beer, get uh, girls. A Miller bikini girl. Girls are they're like moths to a flame. When you pull a beer out, they're there. With their one-piece bathing suit on and a microphone. I don't know why. <laughs> a flashlight. It looks like a flashlight. Live from New York, it's Saturday night. <laughs> Starring James. What's that? And Janet. I think oh, this okay. Is, uh, it's just New York City? It's New York. Mm. New York City. New York City. <laughs> the Empire State Building. 
Now, wait a minute. I'll show you one more. I won't bore you. This is not any good. This is the one. Yeah, are there any that are that. Really, really, really good? Now on tour with Pepsi. <laughs> oh, um, the Jackson 5. Wow. With Tito and... That's oh, yeah, super retro. It's a Pepsi presents the Jackson 5 84 World, World Tour. Wow. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. I mean, you know, uh, but someone else is out there. I mean, yeah. I, I love the Jackson 5 stuff. When he was a kid, that was I like. I, I really like this. And Thriller, I mean, you know. But anyway. Anyways. Okay. We're not going to get political here. We're not going to get opinionated. We're going to just do our job. The Jackson 5, laugh out loud. <laughs> and we got this from him. Two bucks. A giant seizure robot. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, look at the lights on that thing. He walked. Look at Earl. Put it by Earl. You're going to scare the cat. I'm going <laughs> to. Well, we'll do a video later of Earl versus the robot. <laughs> well, all right, take it easy, buddy. Look at the ears. All right with that. Okay. All right, pew, pew, I turned it open. It's still going. Take all right, pew, pew, pew. Wow. All right. Please sell that quickly. <laughs> this thing's cool. Oh, my lord. I think he's missing a gun, though. Yeah, I, I, those things. He's, he's like missing a piece of. I don't know what they go for. I've seen many of these in it's, thrift it's stores. It's like one of those Radio Shack generic yeah. robot yeah, He toys. gave it to you for like two bucks. But... It was two bucks, and it, he, he he's cool. I don't know. I grabbed them. Not my, not my cup of tea. I love <laughs> robots. I love space toys, all of that. But that's too new, and uh, I think he's fine. I don't even know what they go for. That so right. yeah, I, I bought, I bought them for the two dollars. I thought it was two dollars well spent. This was in that box of stuff too. A, a <laughs> bandit mask. I don't know if you want to be a bandit. A vintage it's mask. It's from Rubies. It's not that old. Rubies. Probably probably eighties, nineties, late eighties, nineties. And this and like, what? This is kind of cute. It's a die cut sort of kids book about. A can Mama Kangaroo and her Joey. Aww. It's called Can Kinky Kangaroo. Kinky Kangaroo. Who couldn't hop? Who couldn't hop? 1945. Wow. And the little guy is still in there. I don't. I didn't even look this up. Well, oh, he, the Joe, he, the baby comes out. So he's a book too. The little baby Joey comes out. There he is. Aww. And I think he's also a little bit of a book. Oh, he just opens up, so he can stand him up or something. He just opens up. But he goes inside the mommy's pouch because they are marsupials, they're not mammals. It's different. So you get kinky, kinky kangaroo. Kinky kangaroo. I'm kinky kangaroo. <laughs> That's a whole other story. <laughs> I'm stanky kangaroo, pewee. That's cute. Yeah, it's just, you know, a lot of that cool 1940s start of artwork. But I don't know. I'm, you know, for 20 bucks, we got a bunch of cool stuff. Hi, Lofty Moose. Hey, He's Lofty. watching us. Yeah, and it's not drawn in or anything. No crayon marks. That's good. No missing pages. So that's I love good. stuff like this. So you know, we'll we'll see. Front and back, it's printed like that. That's pretty neat. No, no title. <laughs> I think it's interesting and unique too. It doesn't have any sort of title on it. It's just sort of, a uh, uh, you know, piece of uh, uh, drawn by an artist. Artwork. <laughs> what? Making fun of me there. I am not making fun. And of then me. I for for two dollars I got two pairs of vintage shoes. Mm -hmm. So in the past I sold a pair of nineteen seventies candies um, heels for like a hundred bucks, but um, these are candies probably nineteen seventies or nineteen eighties. Mm -hmm. They're like little flat, hmm. um, little like ankle boots or ankle shoes, booties, shooties. Ankle sh a, uh, shoes and boots, shooties, shabooties, shabooties. I don't know. Made in Korea, but uh, they're they're like Those leather, are cool. and they're real cool. So, because I could not find anything like this, this online, I might aim high and, and put it at like a hundred or best offer and just see how it goes. Um, another pair of vintage shoes, Gammons, made in Spain. They're like little leather, green leather heeled shoes. I think these are probably seventies, but. Those are, those are pretty cool. They look yeah, solid. They look cool. And originally, these must have been at an antique mall or vintage yeah. store. Someone had an $8 sticker on them saying that they're 1940s shoes. But wow. You don't think don't, they are? I don't know if they're that old. Nah, look at the, 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 the type style. Well, I don't know. I don't know if they're really that old. 1940s. Uh, no, I, don't, I wouldn't know. But then what, again, what the, the fabric's really, the leather's really worn. Look at the leather on the bottom. Right? Yeah, Cracked maybe up that is. is 40s. It could be. But we're off to see the to the, to the moving picture shows. Clop 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 clop. I wonder what these <laughs> shoes saw. 
I wonder what if shoes is. could talk. <laughs> oh boy, that would be a whole nother channel. Oh boy, mm. yes, we won't go there. No. All right, so more stuff to show. Oh uh, yeah, they're not not a ton. I don't think. Yeah, but we'll we, see. we bought we bought little stuff this time around. But the little stuff's fun. Little stuff that doesn't take up a lot of room. Stuff that's easy to ship. Because we're running out of room. Because yeah, we're running out of room. Um, you guys gotta buy more stuff. <laughs> well, and we will do a sold video. Um, during the week because I have like 20 things I need to pack up for Monday. And I have a compilation I've been recording since I think the beginning of last month of November of stuff I sold that trickled in. Um, and you need to put that on YouTube. Yeah, my main focus on my reselling side is I do it when, it, like, it's kind of part-time in a way because I, I do a lot of freelance artwork during the day and at most times. So I don't get to, you know... Uh, like, I'm not so focused on, and I, but I'd like to, to, so to build sells, up my business. He sells part-time, I sell full-time, mm -hmm. but he also does um, freelance art. So. Yeah, so that's where a lot of my time is is, is used, but uh, I'd love to be able to, to, to work a little. I'm not that far behind you as far as, as money goes, sales-wise. No, you're, you're, you're actually starting to catch up with yeah, me. Yeah, so. so I just need to, to push a little more, list a lot more. So but what do you got? This is a 19... Wait, I didn't even see that on there. Go ahead. Yeah, That's it's awesome. in it's in loose it's, like a loose site. Uh, loose site. Yeah, it has someone's initials, I believe. That's cool. But this is a um, I don't know if you could you guys can see that, but look at the detailing on that bag. That's called beaded. It's called cord. Cord. C O R D E. That's a cord bag. This is from the 1940s. I paid five for this, and when I do find these between one and five bucks at the flea market. Or a thrift store, mm -hmm. I usually sell them between twenty and thirty dollars. Wow! There are people that collect these vintage nineteen forties cord bags, and if you look at that, they only made these like during that time. That was like I guess a style then. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little zipper bag, just a little purse, and it even says genuine cord on the inside. Oh, it does, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so it has a tag that says genuine AB cord. Wow. Already been chewed. ABC. <laughs> I don't know what AB stands for, but mm. it's a corded bag. So yeah, five bucks for that. That's pretty cool. And all I know is that if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. What? You say you don't know what it stands for. And I said, I'll Okay, forget. never mind. Just some words of wisdom. And I found Ooh. I found silver. <gasps> I found a big chunk silver of silver. And gold. So I That's bought this from a nice couple that they do antique dealing. They had ten dollars on this, mm. and I don't know if they knew it was silver and just didn't care, or if maybe they just didn't see that it said German silver. But this is an antique purse, early nineteen hundreds, I would probably say. Um, How did it hold anything? Because it's well, chainmailish. It is chainmail, and and there's holes in it. But when it was not but holy. When it was not holy, yeah, you could put like your ID, your your chapstick your makeup or whatever your, your keys chapstick. but it does say german silver and it's all tarnished i think just this um clasp part is silver the rest of it's probably just like a cheaper metal mm -hmm. but yeah this part here that's silver wow so that's really cool i in the past i sold one like this um i think i want to say they sell between 30 and 50 but um I, I would. I'm gonna try for thirty on this. Wowzy! Wowzy! Well, that's a, that's a good chunk of silver. That's an, oh you, you could you could that. probably turn that into something else. Make some nice jewelry out of it. Who me? Well, people in general who do that sort of thing. Oh, I thought you meant me. Like, uh -uh, not I not you. Not you. You're not that. Cr <laughs> You're hey. crafty, but not that crafty. Well, it's just a different craft. I'm different craft. Happy. I'm as good as you can get in the crafts that I do. <laughs> so there. So there. Buckaroo Brothers, what's up, guys? Hi, Buckaroo Brothers. Howdy. <laughs> All right, your turn to show something. Um, I got some fun stuff here still. Nobody cares about that. Um, where's that bag? They oh, say here. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. So uh, we, we we ran to a, uh, a dealer there, and she was really nice. I think she was just a little kind of miffed that no one was like buying stuff, you know, lots of stuff. And um, I understand, you know. Flea markets are tough because people, even us, that we want a nickel and dime, right? I mean, we want to get things for a quarter and sell them for, you know, ten dollars on up, right? That's that's <laughs> the but you know, and it, people just don't want to spend a lot. But at the same time, I mean, you know, if they have something good, then I say, you know, I don't have any problem paying up for it. Hi, mom. Hi, kids. <laughs> Mom's passing through. Um, 
but so she had a, a bunch of stuff and we actually i think we may have made a little bit of a uh, of a of a connection right mm-hmm. uh to be able to go through some stuff she has i could yeah I... we we made some connections there where there's some vendors that are like letting us know when they'll be back <laughs> So then, uh, then we tell them like what kind of stuff we look for, and then they'll tell us, okay, well, I'll bring some more stuff for you next time. Right, or and, in or, this case, like go um, over their house. And we we go met, we, stuff. yeah, we met a lady where we may be um, meeting her, you know, sep- away from the flea market. Yeah, I mean, to, I, I said to, to buy some things. From I said her. we'd be interested in, you know, we're, we're, we 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 do some resell, we do we collect stuff. Well, I, I, I told her, and it is, I was very honest. I said some stuff we keep, some stuff we sell. Yeah, and, and we're interested in. And da, 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 and you know, well, because, and, and, and we were just talking a little and bit. That, and that came up because uh, this first thing that I was looking at here, um, I asked uh, if I could get it for a little cheaper, and she's like, "No, online they go for it." Dot dot dot. I'm like, "Okay." So and she, I then I so I said, "Hey," I said, "Why don't you sell it online then?" You know, just kind of out of curiosity, why are you selling it here for a fraction of the price? Oh, because I don't like to go online and do all the shipping and that. And, you know, because I, I said, "Yeah, it's a business. It's a lot of work." She goes, "Yes, it's a lot of work." Yeah, so, and she said that the same person also told us that you know she she uh, has a full time job but likes to sell stuff on the side. Yeah. So some of these people, you know, they work somewhere else and then they go to the flea market to make and, a little extra, and they want to make a little extra. Or sometimes there's older folks that are maybe retired or on a pension or something, mm-hmm. and they they just want to sell stuff to get a little more money. You so know? I saw this on the shelf. At first, I thought it was maybe six million dollar man. I see, you know, uh, Lee Majors. Uh, artwork on there drawn by an artist artwork and um i left you this is much with you um <laughs> but i saw it and, I'm, and it was she wanted six bucks for it it's obviously it's a fall guy okay thermos and uh and i try to play you know oh, do you have the um that's how the conversation started i said do you have you don't happen to have the the um lunch, the lunch box. box she was oh no if we had the lunch boxes they, they would go for 250 dollars with everything with the thermos she wanted six bucks for this. I asked her if she'd do five, and she said no, six. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to push it. That's fine. That's, I think that's, that's fair. fair. If you think you could sell it for more, you I've know. So, I sold a Waltons one, the Waltons, uh, thermos one for like a dollar at um, at VOA, Volunteers of America, for like 30 bucks. I mean, you know, yeah. These people are have the box, want this, or just, lo- this is a pretty rare one, though, too, so... I bet you I can get. I'm. I'm gonna try for fifty on this. We'll see. I mean, Two fifty your best offer, or maybe more. Yeah. So, but you know, and, that, and, and maybe the connection we make is gonna be better because she said she had Barbie stuff. So yeah, yeah. You love so, that. I'm always on the lookout now for vintage Barbie, vintage toys. But the vintage toys and the dolls, um, and toy robots, they're like our favorite. You yeah, know. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We well, we cause... love that stuff. And then some of the blingy jewelry and the vintage purses and shoes I look for because I. Now that now that I've been doing it a while, I I know to look for certain things, certain brands. And she and I was just looking at this. I thought it was kind of neat. I didn't necessarily want it, but I, and I didn't want to. She I could, sometimes you look. I know it's a business, but sometimes you know you just throw people a little bit extra just because, and they're giving you something for it. But well, people like Alf. Oh, I love Alf. You know, and I, there's there was this Alf coffee mug in the that box. That is really cute. It says, "I'll die tomorrow." Hey, <laughs> let's check out the fridge. That hey, is Willie, cute. They kill me. Hey, Willie. That's my Alf impression. <laughs> oh, Alf, what are you doing? Remember Willie? But anyway, she mm-hmm. gave me uh, the Lee Majors uh, uh, thermos and this for, for $10. I think that's a good buy. I think it's great. I, I might be able to unload this for, I don't know, maybe 15 and even if and even if you're not a reseller, that's a good buy if you just bought it just because you like it. Yeah. And um, but when she was, we, yeah. most of the things we put online, we have best offer. Like, mm-hmm. we there is some wiggle room yeah. when we do put stuff yeah. online. We're, we're as trying long to as we can make something off of it. You, you know, know, it's like anybody else on there. Most of us are trying to make a living. So, you know, if you have something for sale, we're just trying to mm-hmm. get the most we can, obviously. Well, what's And it's really what it, what it's worth to the person buying it. Like, there there are things that I, I wouldn't even sneeze at if it was. I mean, look at what we were buying with some of this memorabilia. Yeah. And I don't feel bad. I should. I mean, I, if someone said this amount of money for something else, I'd be like, oh, hell no. Yeah. But, but certain things, it's like, yeah, of course I'll give you that for that because it's worth it to me. Mm-hmm. So we'll see with Alf. I don't know so much, but anyway. I, I'm really happy with my robot. You love that robot. <laughs> I love this robot. I don't know. I might keep them. There, there were, uh, the honey hole had about four or five of them at one time. I yeah, didn't but buy this one. one works. Sometimes when you find these at a thrift store, you don't know if they I'm work. You're getting a little jealous of the robot. I, I bought him for $2, and I know that he Easy works. Easy robot. I know where your batteries are. <laughs> um, something I bought for... This is not even a, for a resale or anything, but 
uh, you know, mystery tape. A mystery Ooh. tape. Um, Maybe there's something juicy on buy? here. I don't know. Oh, I got so I got this for a buck. This isn't like what the buck. This, what the buck? Well, welcome to the what the buck segment. What the buck segment? Okay, it's a Vicky Teal, a Vicky Teal tote bag. I was thinking WTF is Vicky Teal. Like I didn't know what it was. I looked it up. It, it's a perfume company. So um, it looks like her stuff is random all over the place, like 10 to 30 bucks. Mm. Some stuff was 40 bucks. I'll probably just put this up for like 10 or 15, but paid a dollar and it's a cute tote bag. Yeah. So there's this there's my I'm random. Sorry. I'm going to give it a try. It's only a dollar gamble. Um, and then I picked up Barbie stuff. I picked up Barbie. Ooh, Barbie stuff. Oh, dolly time. Yeah, dolly time. Is that on backwards or is that the right way? That I think goes? that's the right way. So I, I mainly bought Girl. this bag and this doll. Oh, and then there's a, a chair that goes with it. Where'd the chair go? Girl. And this chair for $10. This is from some Barbie hair styling beauty thing. Um, but some of these clothes in this bag look vintage, where some of the clothing pieces could be good. Um, this outfit that this doll's wearing looks like it's from the 1960s. Mm. Um, let me see. Does it have a Barbie tag on it? I don't even know. Does it? Does it? I'm t I'm getting my Barbie naked here. Uh oh. There there's there's some nudity on YouTube. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Where are the censors? There's there's some naked. The censors. It says Vogue. The tag says Vogue. So actually, that's not Barbie at all. This must go to a Vogue doll from oh, back in the day. And that's probably it. Could be worse. What's Vogue? You know. Um, Vogue, it's a, they made dolls. All right. Well, they there did. You go. That's very specific. I don't know what, what Vogue doll it goes to. So gotcha. I, oh. now there's a new mystery there. And then you got some old photos. Well, yeah, I mean, you can go over your dolls. I'm just kind of. No, no, you, 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 can, you can talk and show some things because well, I'm going through the clothes now. Well, we went to this one vendor who we in the past have gotten some really cool stuff from. It's I, I'm a, I'm a big you know paper guy, and they they refer to paper as anything well made out of paper, like uh, photographs, uh, new old newspapers, whatever that's that's printed on well paper. And uh, he had he had so much stuff, and this and I, he had just a fraction of what he usually has. And sometimes usually when he's outside, the stuff's blown everywhere. Uh, but inside, it was a lot easier to, to deal with. But there was, uh, he had a bunch of like, you know, little uh, cardboard lot, like little um, trays, like lids from cardboard boxes full of like uh, eight by tens from old uh, movies and uh, lobby card type stuff, prints of that. And, um, but I did find one that had a lot of like photographs and, and letters and stuff. That's the kind of stuff that like from the 1940s, the mid forties. Cool. And um, like, or during the war and after the war, World War II. And I, uh, I remember doing the Berea Flea Market when it used to be uh, at the Memphis Drive-In years and years ago. I never bought them, but uh, I would always explain to people, I'm like, I wish I would have bought these photographs that were from the 40s. It was a, were multiple different women, different separate photographs of women sitting by a desk. I, I think this was all taken in the same studio. They would just bring, what they did was they brought the photograph of their man who was in the service. Aww. And have it on the desk, and they just longing. They're they're sitting at it with their sort of back towards their side of their face, and they're looking longingly at the photo. Aww. But I never bought any of them. But guess what was in here? One of them, their photographs. Look at that. Something like that. You see so that? That's, that's World War II. Era. That's a woman looking at a photograph. I guess that was a common thing uh, that you get a photograph of yourself looking at the you know whoever you had in service over in the war, you know, and in service. Now there's a lot of other, a lot of other photos in here, um, and letters. I'll have to make a. Um, I, I think I'm on this channel. It'd be fun for me to go through some of the stuff I call found things because. I thought Sorry. You were taking some tape out. No, this is um, another robot. No, this is a 1982. Um, something where it curls her hair. I don't remember the name of it, but it's some like hair curling thing. So that's cool. I didn't know that that was in the bag. I uh, just saw the clothes and like a few little hairbrushes, and then found that little Barbie curler thingamajig. Look at this. Um, these are from Lorraine, but I like the old uh, Ooh, it's drug, it's the old drugstore pouches they would come in. You get your film developed, you send your negatives in, and you would they would give you back this um, 
you know, pouch with all the your old post Our old postcards a big thing. I see a lot of them from time to time. So it depends what it is, Lofty Moose. That's a good question. Um, I have actually a lot of old postcards I'm donating because I didn't sell them. But there's a handful of different postcards that I've sold that had... Um, that had swastikas on them, but they predate World War II. They were from like late 1800s, early 1900s. And back before all that evil stuff, it was a sign of peace and, oh, and friendship. Yeah. So yeah, some of those, because they're kind of controversial now, um, some of those sell, or if it's um, like an old photo postcard where the photo was really interesting, um, like some of the pinup photo postcards, People like those. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of them that don't sell, or if they do sell, they sell very cheap, just like a buck or two. So yeah, I, I had some in my shop when I had the shop that sold, and now I have like a box of them that I'm probably just going to donate. Look, read that there. Hi from a Missy. Oh, Missy and Ray in Hartville. Hi, Missy, Missy and Ray. Missy was extremely sick, but she's doing better, so she'll be home <gasps> oh. soon. Get well, Missy. Get uh, better, Missy. Yeah, and uh, hope you get home very, very soon in time for the holidays. We yeah. know about that. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, I'm sorry. We want you guys to be better for Christmas. And we hope everything gets better you, for you. And you got to get better so we can come down in uh, around yeah. spring and check out the... And we still need to visit you guys. Yeah, we would love to. Um, here, look at these two dapper guys, these sailors. This was taken in Pennsylvania where they were stationed. Oh, that's cute. But stuff like that, you know, there's some stuff See, right, right on the back. People like that stuff. Yeah, I like it. There it's is cool. so much stuff. So it's funny because I grabbed, there's even more of this. So I grabbed and he goes, he was selling, now he was selling things for a buck a piece. Everything is a dollar. What the buck? This is a what the buck, right? You have your what the buck moment well, now. Well, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I do because not only did I get... So I grant. He goes, "What do you got there?" I said, "Someone's life." <laughs> and I had three dollars in my hand. He goes, "Give me three bucks." So I got for three dollars, which is, I thought this would be a buck a piece. Have you come across old holiday cards for something something? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that last comment. What, what, for Christmas. Someone was asking about old holiday cards. Well, today was, Did I didn't buy any. any. When oh, you were they out? had five five old vint like 1900s. Oh, oh. Oh, like It's a Wonderful Life or Christmas oh, Carol. No. no. No, those we haven't seen. And I didn't catch that last comment. Some, somebody, I'm sorry. somebody had vintage, oh, the, that one last table we went to, one of the last ones. They had vintage uh, Christmas postcards written on date, uh, post stamp 1909, 1919, mm -hmm. you know, with people who had Merry Christmas, da 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 da. Sorry, going to read this. You spent a lot. What, what was something you spent a lot of money on that you thought would make huge money and it never sold? Mm. Oh, good question. I know one. I, I can think of one, and it's still in the shop. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're working on getting things cleared out. I'll probably have to put it in the garage for a while. Um, I, have a, I have a 1930s gynecological oh, that thing, yeah. examination table. Um, spent a couple hundred bucks on it. I don't know if I'll sell it, but it was cool. Yeah, that. that so, so there's only been like, uh, yeah, I, I, most of our stuff we can sell, and then if we don't sell, we donate it if we didn't spend a lot on it. We, yeah, we're kind of weird too. Like, I mean, like for us to spend like twenty bucks on one thing, that's big, you know. Yeah. That's a lot for us to to think about spending. But I did do that today. I'll get to that in a minute, and, and I haven't even listed it yet. Well, there was there was one time. So I spent. This was, uh, I think, over the summertime. I bought at a yard sale for fifteen dollars a sewing <gasps> machine. Fifteen. Yeah. And well, it, I, I thought, oh, this could be good. I take it home. It doesn't work. I look up the brand. They don't really sell. So I, I threw it outside yeah. for the scrappers. Uh, we've never spent hundreds of dollars on. Yeah, I don't yet. like. We don't spend like hundreds of dollars on stuff that we're gonna resell. I mean, I just. I mean, it's rare for us to do. Bought that, that uniform for six hundred guys. But, you well, know. but that was for your own <laughs> but that collection. Was, right. That I wasn't mean, like to resell. I know, but but that, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, so that's what I'm saying. It's funny because I'm like kind of like 20 bucks for this thing I bought today. I'm like, that's or, a lot of money. Or sometimes when, if we went to like, let's say if we went to the Goodwill bins and I, I picked up a handful of clothes that I thought could be good and then I later on I find that they have a hole in them or there's yeah, a stain in the But you fair. didn't have a lot in it though. Then I'll just like throw them out or donate them back. But, but the good thing yeah, is most of the time I don't have like a lot of money invested I mean, in yeah, stuff. For some but, reason, they're a model, right? But a lot of stuff that we buy, sometimes it takes a long time to sell. Like some of the vintage clothing that I have listed takes a year or two to sell. So, 
you know, if, if you spend a couple hundred bucks just on vintage clothes and then you're sitting on it for a long time, that, that might, you know, eat up your money. If you know, But, yeah, I mean, so far, nothing like where we're like underwater or losing our shirts or something. No, we're really, yeah. we're really like sort of like picky. I mean, I guess we could go out there and source something for 75 bucks, one thing, and sell it for four or $500. But I think we have more fun buying... A lot of things for seventy five dollars <laughs> and selling them for four or five. You know it, what I mean? I mean, we we could look for higher dollar things, yeah. but they also don't always come along. Like yeah, it's so. But it's something. It's it, it is it is a that is a good way to do things. Right, that it, that it would be yeah. a smarter. That is a smart thing to do because then you have less items taking up space, less items listed. Yeah. If you have like a smaller number of things and they go for higher dollars they go for more money but then you have to invest more in it so think about um, with the smaller items that sell for like 10 20 30 yeah, 40 quicker. bucks yeah. they sell they tend to sell a little bit quicker than the higher dollar things. And, and when you say for ebay now obviously if you buy something all day if you buy for 100 and sell for 500 you, you it wouldn't even matter how much you listen on ebay because what was that hot of a thing it would just move it would just disappear as soon as you put it up Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, there's some stuff I've put up online where it sells within minutes. Yeah, and then I'm like, for tons. I mean, did like, I price crazy. that right? <laughs> yeah, but still, that somebody bought it. I agree with that. I love having lots of three or four dollar items yeah. and selling them for twenty to sixty. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that, and that's how we, and it's just more fun, and we get to list more because if you're talking about the algorithm that the, that, that eBay uses, if you mm -hmm. list one thing, it's great, it, especially if you sell it right away. But if you don't. That algorithm thing will work against you, and you and somehow you get buried. Your listing gets buried, especially if it's a popular thing. I don't know. It's it, well, so this gives you it more seems stuff like, to list. Yeah, it seems like with eBay, and and it may be different for other people. We're not saying that this yeah. is the way to do it, but this is just how we do it. Mm -hmm. If I list like twenty, thirty dollar items or ten dollar items, it seems like I'll get more sales. Mm -hmm. Like it helps trigger sales the more I list. It's like feeding that beast. Mm -hmm. Is there one thing you wish you bought and walked past, but you still think about? Um, Ooh, personally, that's a good question. Yeah, I think James has a few he could share. It's one, the one I'm I trying have, to think because I, I I know that there have been items like that. I'm just trying to think of like certain ones. Um, recent ones, I can't think mm -hmm. of. As recent as just today, there there was a guy that bought it was like bought it right up from under in, underneath me because he was first. But there was a uh, an, an, a. I'll tell the whole story. So, yeah, tell the whole story. Really quick. So, Slow it, there, down. There, it's really, it was really cool. It was a little, um, oh, holy sh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because it's, I'm telling you, this is a whole nother holy thing. Holy crap. Talk about. Well, talk he about just that in discovered a a, something, but we'll show it well, later. This, is a whole, this, this just happened right. I was like, let me just see. I'm like, he uh -oh. was looking something up while we were talking. Something I bought for less than a dollar today. Oh my gosh. Okay, then this is what we're talking about. We'll get to that. So, okay. real quick, something I wish I bought. But then I, but then I was uh, exonerated quite right after by looking it up on eBay real quick. It, but it sounded cool. Uh, dude had a um, selling a little uh, mini record from Lionel Trains from the late or the mid fifties, and it had train whistle sounds on it. Hi, John. And um, hey, man. Um, it had train whistle sounds. It had really cool artwork on it. It was neat. It was a seventy eight. You know, it played on seventy eight RPM. And the guy was like, "Well, that does sound like a rarity. How much are you looking for it? Five bucks." I'm like. Oh, and he, he bought it for five bucks. I said, okay, let me see. Let me make sure that I'm not going to flip out. And I, I looked it up on, on eBay, and they only go for 15 You know, what some sold for $15. So it wasn't, exactly. wasn't that big of a deal. Not a big loss. But it so, was a cool record. But I thought, um, you, did you have one? Uh, you know, I'm trying to think, because there, I know that there have been, um, like, some jewelry pieces and some vintage pieces where I know the seller was asking for a little bit more than what I would normally pay, but... Right. You know, later on, I'm like, oh, maybe I should have bought that. Maybe I should have tried for it. But um, I can't think of, like, one thing in particular at the, at, the, at the moment. I can think of two things, and I'll tell you that it's what's interesting about them, or maybe not, is that they, they were things I, I came across early in the, in the, in the, in the mid-'90s that I wish, oh, congrats. Oh, someone's congr con congratulating <laughs> someone for winning a prize. Cool. That's good. They all know each other. Um, but it was before I, I mean, I wasn't reselling back then, but it was, there were two great, interesting things. One was, a, it was at a, in Cleveland, there was a street named Lorraine, right? And there was, uh, it used to be called Antiques Row, 
on, on Lorraine. Yeah, Lorraine just, Avenue in Cleveland used to be huge for antique shops. There were tons shops. of shops. It was awesome. Okay. Now, now most of the there's stores few, are like empty. There's a but, few there left, but not. It, but I even have a, a little brochure that tells all the stores that are antiques right from the It was really cool. Um, but there was one, and they were random. I mean, some popped up and would go away. But I remember going to one place, and this guy was sitting there, and he had this. It must have been from the late 1800s, early 1900s. But it was a huge glass showcase, wooden, beautiful, full of giant bugs. like Giant bugs? Stick bugs, you know, oh. specimens from, you know. He wanted three. Now, this was when I was in my mid-20s. I was like, how much is that? It was neat. And I lived, and at the time, I was renting an old hot home to live in. In Cleveland, and that would have been perfect on the wall. That would have been a cool display. He piece. wanted three hundred dollars for it. Now, if if oh my god, and I, even at that, when I, you're in your twenties, three hundred dollars is a lot of money. I, but I was I had a real good job. <laughs> I could have afforded it, but I just didn't know. And I, I was like, oh, that's too much, man. Give it, Didn't you tell me about that? What about that? That um, the hair? Yeah, I'm gonna talk about that next. Oh, okay. I said two things. So, uh, so that if I could go back in time, I would buy it in a heartbeat. I would probably still have it to this day. And man, the resell on that, I don't even know. Which you can get for that because it was it must have been from a museum or something mm -hmm. it was gorgeous wow leaded glass had about at least six or eight bugs in this thing like giant, giant stick bugs exotic leaf bugs exotic bugs you know they're on Insects. the big they had the big pin in the middle you know mm -hmm. to stick them on there and they so were, it was like antique taxidermy oh my god vintage taxidermy Ugh, i had so stupid and the other thing yes it's a little bit morbid but Mike and I and I I don't know. I feel like one day I'm gonna have another chance at this thing, and but I don't know. I I, I just hope well, I randomly find it somewhere. There's like, always there it is. there's always gonna be stuff. It's one thing though. It's it's very so something could turn up. But this is so specific. If it's out there, someone either has it, know they have it, and maybe they maybe if I search hard enough online, maybe someone has it somewhere and is showing it off. But it's that specific. It's one of one. 1915, uh, 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 a boat, uh, I can't a think ship? Of, it was a, it was a, there was a, um, a party going on uh, for, I forget the name of the, um, was uh, it, the electrical company. Was it a ship on it, Lake Erie? No, 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 in or Chicago. Was it? it was in Chicago. So it was in Chicago. It wasn't even out on the ocean. So, it was like maybe, it was right, it was kind of sort of kind of dry docked in a way. It was just a little bit off of the edge of the, of the pier. Okay. And there was, uh, so that West, would be Lake Michigan, Western right? Electric, I think it was called. Yeah, Western Electric, and that's where their, their headquarters were. It was, it was 1915. Um, they were. If you look it up, you can find the story. It's easy to find. Look up 1915 Chicago boat uh, tragedy. But there was a party. Western Electric was a huge electric, and, and, and you see their them on the beginning of movies. You'll see you know sound provided by Western Electric, all this kind of stuff. But they had this kind of a shindig. Maybe an hour or two into the whole party on this boat, it sank. It started going under, and a lot. Of, and back then, everybody wore these, you know, giant dresses. They had the big fancy layered. dresses, layers of clothing. So imagine being in the water with that on. Okay, you're wearing all those clothes, and you're trying to stay. Yeah, a lot afloat. of people. There, a lot of people drowned, and they died oh. in that harbor. So fast forward to maybe the early, early the mid 1990s. I go to the, the flea market. A guy, and I didn't even know about this boat thing until, but I, but it didn't matter. So he had this like framed, box framed, sort of, uh, you know, about this big, uh, with a big giant piece of a braided hair in there. Like, and it looked old, you know what I mean? It was like a, and it was kind of, I remember it was kind of in, in a coil. And it had like a little plaque or something there. But he said, like, this is a braid of hair from one of the, uh, one of the, um, the turbines, the, the uh, rotors. Some woman's hair got caught in that thing, oh. and they pulled it out of there, and it was supposed to be... SS Eastland. The Eastland, yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for looking that up for us. I know. It, it is really sad, no, very super morbid, girl. but supposedly, supposedly that was supposed to be a, a, a braid That was a lock of, of someone's hair. That was pulled out of one of the uh, the oh. rotors of the boat, and they wanted 75 bucks for it, and, I, and again, I'm a super cheap man, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's a lot of money, oh, maybe I'll get it, and I think... I think, and it's one of those rare, one of a kind pieces. And even though it's it's a bad story, oh, it's, how it's, weird would that it's be also that? a way to remember yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. And there's actually some footage that that recently that recently surfaced from that that they didn't know whether it was lost or something. But you see him pulling people out of the. Oh, it's really really sad. Oh, but that's so but in, but if the the sort of morbid curiosity and, and to honor it or whatever you want to say, I, I wish I would. It's had just that. one of those oddity things. Yeah, because it was um, so. Oh my. And ha it's it's sad, but then at the same time, it's it's part of history, kind of like the yeah. Titanic and stuff yeah. like that. So 
Okay, something anyway, happy. Let's let's show happy stuff. <laughs> so, so let me let, 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 let talk about this real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So part of that paper deal that I got, the three dollars I spent on this, right? I don't, huh? What's and the say? headless life-size doll you found in the dumpster. Oh, we, did, we didn't sell that. Or we didn't buy that. No, we, we ended up uh, giving that away to uh, a photo studio. Uh, oh, a so, photographer. Uh, someone was selling Lynch stuff. Well, you know what? We, we went to a, a flea market. We have to say which flea market we went to. Someone, someone uh, had stuff from an old, from a judge who passed away, and in their barn there was a noose. Yeah, that was creepy. You almost bought it, but then you didn't. Some well, I was really considering it, but there's the morbid part of it, and then you don't have anything to really validate it. You don't know if the story is true. It could have just been something they hung it, up in there. And it could have been something. They could have made the noose to look old and then just said it was from... Maybe it was funny when they had parties in there. And yeah. They, like, oh, the judge has a noose. So who knows? Yeah, so, so you don't really know. So that's why I didn't buy it. So, really, so again, part of this whole lot of paper stuff that I bought... Who says hello? Mr. Molto. Mr. Molto. Hi, hey. Mr. Molto. <laughs> so, part of the paper stuff, I, I also said, and what about this? And he goes, oh, yeah, throw that in there, too. So, it's part of a $3 deal. <laughs> he paid $3 for a stack of vintage ephemera. I, at first, I said, hey, Janet, look, paper dolls. You're like, oh, the paper dolls don't really make Wait, He movement. said he bought paper dolls, and I was telling him on the way to the car, so far, I haven't had luck with the paper right. dolls selling. But I said, this is Ricky Nelson. Do you, oh, that's a good question. Do you ever think you bring ghosts home with, with stuff? You're gonna tell the lolly story after this. Oh, I will, and so we have we have video of that. So yes, we're gonna share we have that something to talk this about. week too. Hit the like button. That's right. Yes, thank you, Lofty <laughs> Moose. Yeah, so we have 13 watching right now. Can my lucky 13 click the like button? Yeah, we would really, already. really, really appreciate you. Thank you. So yeah, Ricky Nelson, if you don't know, was like the I don't know. He was a huge teen idol. He was on um, uh, that what was that TV show he was on. I can't think of it right now. Um, oh shoot, it wasn't Dobie Gillis. Uh, some TV show in the fifties. Um, but he was also a performer. He's the father of the Nelsons. Remember those two twin, the Nelson twin guys with the long blonde hair that were out in the in the late eighties. I'll take your word for it. They were uh, yeah, they were a song duo. But Ricky Nelson was like this really like hot guy back then that all the girls wanted to be with. Blah blah blah. But this is a cutout, paper doll cutout book. There's actually one of the paper dolls that's still on there. Now, the condition, you know, it's been used, obviously. Some girl or boy wanted to play with this, and they did. Yeah, so it looks like everything's cut out. He's, but a just, he's a fool for your love. As long as everything's there. Here's the Ricky doll with no feet. His feet are chopped off, unfortunately. But, hey, now I have to look at the condition. So just for, you know, craps and giggles, I just looked it up on eBay, and that's when you heard the little blah. But on eBay... I don't know what the condition is. I'll oh, see. That's all it's complete, though. Yeah, that's I think, okay. I think. The, but look at okay. But still. Well, maybe the, you could. Okay, show so so show them. <laughs> so so I don't know if you can see this, but there are the listings go from a hundred dollars to two hundred twenty-five dollars. Now the condition. I don't know if you can even see that. Forget it. The condition. Most paper dolls sell if they're not cut out. That's fine. But if they're rare enough, okay. as long as all the pieces are there, I think it could sell. So, I mean, for less than a dollar, if I sell this for $50, that's not bad. 50 is good? Yeah. When you paid three? I'll try, yeah. I'll try seven, I'll probably try <laughs> 100 or 75 bucks at, or best offer or something like that. But yeah, I mean, that's that right there will pay for my yes. whatever I spent today. And going right, into the so, ghost story, yes. or ghost stuff. The question was, have we ever brought have we have we ever brought anything home? So, Two stories actually. So here. okay, so I have bought haunted dolls from the flea market, or people who have told me the dolls were haunted. I had no way of proving they were haunted. But they told me stories oh. to go with them. So there yeah, were stories, there were two or three vintage dolls I bought from the same person, and they had signs on their table that said uh, "Morning Haunted Dolls." And they had them in a, a, a they were, case. And they were like in these clear cases, <laughs> trapped in. And he said that he was doing a clean out, and that there was a pentagram drawn on an attic floor, and that each of the dolls there was like a doll at each point. There were five dolls in there. And there yeah. were five dolls, but I think I bought maybe two or three from him, and he must have sold the other he ones to someone yeah. else. He told the same story, except um, every time we bought one, because he didn't remember us, but yeah, but yeah, but that he, he told a pentagram story the second time we bought it. And I'm like, that's a good story. 
Yeah, so we don't know. I it's still a good story. I was nice to the dolls. I I was yes, we treated I, them with much respect. We treated them with respect. I did sell them online, and there I did sell them to some paranormal investigators from California. Yeah. I don't recall the names right now, but this was like a year or two ago. Now the one thing, um, that, okay, and, and they went for like thirty bucks. You know, no, but it's not like I. No, so it was like you know, it's a cool vintage doll, regardless, and if it does have some some haunted aura, maybe they can investigate it. Now, something that we that Janet, I, and some and a, and a, and a, and a, about four or five other people witnessed. Did you tell them they were haunted? Yes, yes. I did. I did. I like I said, I sold the dolls to um, a paranormal investigator, and he asked if I experienced anything haunted. And I know the one doll, like, it had the sleep eyes, meaning the eyes can open and close. Sometimes it looked like the doll was opening its eyes on its own, but I couldn't tell if maybe it was, if, if it was just something with the eyes. So I, it, maybe I didn't. Maybe she had gas. <laughs> I didn't sense anything weird about them, but I like weird dolls that are, you know, mm -hmm. they don't bother me. You know? and, uh, I'm just used to it, I guess. And then this story. Oh, okay. And then I had a haunted painting in the shop that I actually It gave. looked like this. It was this character. <laughs> no one wanted to buy it, and I ended up giving it to a friend of ours. But when we got it from the person, they said, we just want you to have this. He gave us a bunch of paintings one man did. Yeah, so we uh, have a Facebook friend that I guess worked with this older gentleman that did painting. And he was angry just, about something the one day he was doing a painting. And he told... People that this one painting was cursed. So it was a, a picture of a nun from what's that movie? The Nun, I think it's called. Was or, it? Or, uh, it's it's the nun paranormal? from the it's the nun from the Conjuring. The Conjuring, yes. And um, it looked like this. He thing. he just painted the nun from that movie, but yeah, he said right. that the painting was cursed. This thing. So okay. So there, I had a painting of that in the shop, and sure, cursed. we both experienced this. It was you, I. It was you, me, and, some, and, and, and about some, four or five other people. And in the some shop. other people that were in the shop. We were talking. We were talking, just blah blah blah, chit chatting. It was hanging on the wall. It, I had it hanging up on the wall. The door was closed. There was no breeze coming we have in. No trains. No vents. No, nope, no trains. No the earthquakes. The thing flew this, off the wall. This thing flew off the wall and then knocked a bunch of other stuff off the wall. So and it, it did like, that more than once. It did that probably a handful it, of times in the time that it was at the shop. It, yeah, but that day, that particular day, we looked at each other like, oh, okay. It's we joked. We around. were both like, Ugh. we all looked at it, we all told people that's a haunted painting. Don't worry about it. It's haunted. We hung it back up. Well, and I would get mad and swear at the painting. Well, I'd be like, me. why the bleep did you do that? Like I would yell at it. I didn't care. Well, <laughs> it flew off. I hung it back up we proceeded to our conversation again it flew off again it jumped off the wall I'm again. like okay that's it I'm gonna just put it up against the wall because it's so, it's then, me so out. then we had it facing the wall where it's like okay well you can't you can't hang with us you got to go in the corner yeah it's like you don't play well with others You're a fictional character why it might, it might have been that guy's <laughs> energy though you know in that in the frame yeah or put bad vibes on the painting yeah. whatever whatever happened there but um someone else owns it now and I, I told them all the only other stuff I got. Was, oh, thank you, John. He says, "Wow, that's quite a story." Oh, um, I got these from a dude, and he gave us a, a pretty good lead on the, some stuff we should be looking for, which we won't go into right now because it's hard to explain. But typing a caps to be easier to read. Thank you. That's a good. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> that does help. But uh, last time we were there, he had a bag of these things, and um, they're referred to as oily jigglers. Oily they're, um, jigglers. But they're like, look, these ones are particular. They, they, they made all kinds of stuff. Aliens, monsters, dinosaurs, uh, animals, uh, fish skeletons. I mean, they were making these things probably in the, mm, I would say, mid-50s on up into the 60s, 70s even. And they started making hard plastic toys, which I hated. But the, I, I remember the little jigglers you'd get out of the vending machines as a kid. Oh, another question. With you two having different tastes, what do you like uh, for reselling? What did you guys ever think the other wanted? Oh, there you go. Um, I can read it. Talking about, like, if there's things that you buy that I think you're wasting money on, or if I buy things and you think I'm wasting money, I think that's what he was asking, If because of our differences in what we buy. Yeah, totally. That that That's happened a lot. It happens all the time. Where she thinks that when I'm buying something, and you do it more towards me, sometimes... I well, just, sometimes he'll buy things and I'll tell him, well, I wouldn't have bought that. Like that Ricky Nelson. 
paper doll. Yeah, because I, I he <laughs> bought the Ricky Nelson paper doll, and I told him, well, I already have a stack of paper but dolls. But not Ricky Nelson paper doll. And so far, they're not really selling. You have you have uh, licensed one too. They're like, well, oh. I, I have vintage Barbie ones. Yeah. There's like some really. Yeah. They, they're pretty cool. So I think maybe later on they could sell, but. But it just depends how rare they are. You know I think I mean? paper dolls are real slow moving because well, not many people are into them anymore. Well, here's the thing that if you ever see these, honey, please pick them up. I think you know to do that. Um, but they're called jigglers. I bought, there's like one, two, three, four, five, there's six of them in this bag, right? I bought them from a dude. He knows exactly what these things are. He sold, he, he was selling the bags for $10, okay? The last time I bought a bag from him, last month, I put it online, I put it on, or I put it online, I put it on eBay, for, I think for 35 and they sold that night to someone in Japan, bought them, like boom. So I'm going to probably charge a little bit more for these. One time I had... Well, we had it on our set for a couple of years. We didn't know what it was. He picked up some vintage skeleton. Oh, this was the best. This was really cool. So this was a 1960s Hong Kong skeleton. I had no idea. And it was like a squeaky toy, and it was about yay big. It looked like We it. had it hanging up on our studio for a couple of years. There's pictures and of it still in our studio. I'm looking around, and I'm like, well, that's cool. I, I want. I was looking up vintage Halloween stuff and found that one. And you're like, what's that all about? Well, we right? sold Why it. That we up? ended up selling it. Uh, like a week or two later for $150. It was weird because it was a... Um, <laughs> we didn't know. It had like a zombie head. A zombie hair, rotting hair, head with long hair. A rib cage. And it, this was like a little plastic squeaky toy. Thing. Yeah, well, here, here, let me explain what the squeaky toy... So imagine the skeleton about this tall, right? With a sort of a humanish head, zombie looking features. Real cheap painted. It looked terrible. Yeah. But the it rib cage... cheesy. The rib cage was, was sort of like, was you know, was, was hollow. And inside of the rib cage, you could see it through the bottom and through the ribs, was the, was the, were the guts. It was like, you know, intestines, heart, lungs, but it was all one piece that was a squeak toy. Like, you'd squeak it, you know, it would squeak when you press it. I was like, why are the guts squeaky? <laughs> yeah, squeaky toy. It was weird. But now we know. If I see one of those things, I'm going to pick it right up. Yeah. So, so it, yeah. It's, it's like just one of those so, things that you wouldn't really think that it's a thing, but I guess because... I'll, I'll, They're hard to find. People like them. I'll finish my thought, too. I was, I was talking about Sorry, found. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no. Earlier, I was talking about found stuff. On this channel, I'd like to do, uh, or on our, our channel, I'd like to do a, um, what do they call this? Uh, a playlist? A playlist of found stuff I find. Audio, video, uh, you know, paper stuff. And kind of focus in on a group, like this one group of uh, 1940s photos. Mm -hmm. um, find out as much information as I can about this thing. Figure out how I want to, you know, uh, what I want to let out as far as who these people might have been. And that, because remember, I have the uh, the acrobat stuff, you know, from mm -hmm. the from the 30s. Uh, some he's got of some really cool stuff. He, really yeah, he stuff. found photos of a, a family of acrobats. Yeah, and, and little some, store paper stories. Some of paper them. stuff about yeah. their life. So maybe feature that kind of stuff, and maybe. It'll find its way back to these people. I would have no problem giving it back to families that know who this, these people are. Or if care. anything else, it's just a little bit of history that could be shared yeah. in archive. Yeah, paying homage just to, to human beings that lived. And, you know, th th this is their whole life. That's why I said this. I got someone's life right here, basically. Pictures and letters. But uh, from another table, um, you know, this is cool. Well, kind of cool. I didn't even take it out of here. It but looks like a ticket. It's a merry-go-round ticket. Uh, one ride, five cents. Kindling and Gish. I don't know what that is, but again, that's why I love the fact that we live in the, the day and age of Google or, or looking up stuff uh, on search engines because it's fun to find this stuff and actually be able to look it up. Cool. It seems like in the past when you de dealt in antiques and things, they, they had those volumes of books that, ca that came out, but how often were those updated, you know? An old letter, which I have no idea what's in it, and it's, uh, when was it dated? I don't even know, probably the 40s. This was kind of neat. I don't know what SIFO is. It says SIFO Educational Toys, but it's a little toy catalog with educational toys, I believe, from the 40s. This is, um, oh. while you're looking at that, yep. this is, it's a handmade outfit. She originally came with a little swimsuit. Um, the lady that sold it to me said she had it when she was a kid. Oh. It's a vintage doll, and I think her name was Susie Suntan. Oh, that's the one. This is the one where I guess if you put her out in the sun, her skin actually changes color. Wow, that's weird. And she gets a tan, but her hair looks, I, I don't know if the hair was cut or if it just needs combed out. Maybe the doll already had short hair. She's Sally Psycho. But she has her little, her original little shoes. So I bought that and like another doll for like 10 bucks. Huh. So Susie's, I think it was Susie Suntan. Very original name. Yeah, and she has like her little, her little sunbathing, Susie Sunburn. 
There's a cream for that. Maybe she'll turn bright red and be Susie Sunburn. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Yeah, but but as far as uh, us trying, you know, what did you buy that for? And it's selling like for a crazy amount of money, or just selling quickly, or selling it all. That yeah, we've done that. We do that all the time. Have you had bad luck buying or selling puzzles or board games? No. I don't buy a lot of board games or puzzles unless if they're sealed. I do. Or if it's or if it looks like it's vintage and I get it for the right price. Yeah, you just he sold loves, I, what's that? that night, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas Yahtzee, right? Oh, yeah. I sold a Nightmare Before Christmas Yahtzee game for $35.99. I paid five for it at a yard sale in Parma, Ohio. Um... But yeah, this this is a Howdy Doody doll that I bought um, to give to someone as a gift for Christmas. Yeah, board games and, and puzzles. I've sold some. I have a lot sitting around still. But yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're, as long as you get them and they're complete, I mean, I, there's something weird about me. Like I don't mind counting puzzle pieces, even you know, uh, and things like that. And you know, so far maybe seven times out of ten they're all complete. But then you know, mm -hmm. they, they don't. They're not the fastest sellers. Let's put it this way. He had another brother, heavy duty. <laughs> well, but but our but our but our well, I'm gonna do something in a minute. Well, okay. But one of the best things we you know, but if you find board games like this, they sell quickly. Like the Dracula board game I found from 1963. Yeah, that I don't know if we'll ever find a board game Never. like that. You paid what, fifty cents for that thing? Fifty cents. It sold for 150 bucks. Like quickly, yes. I mean, it was made in 1963 by Hasbro. Apparently, they made. Uh, they, they, from what that we was, understood, the that was like two years ago. Yeah, they, they made the Wolfman game, uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, and maybe Creature from the Black Lagoon, I'm not sure. But they made these real simple board games. I had no idea they, they existed. I saw them in a thrift shop. I almost crapped my pants. 50 cents, I crapped my pants again. And I <laughs> kind of peed my pants. And Creature features. I oh, have one of those. Yeah, those things are cool. ultra rare. Very cool. And I can't believe we sold, we should have just kept that, but I don't know. We just, we're, we're here to sell things. How does Howdy's oh Howdy's, creepy doll? Howdy's mouth doesn't <laughs> Another work. Another weird doll. No, Howdy doesn't hurt uh, his um his hanky's missing. And his jaw doesn't and work. And his mouth his his mouth is supposed to move. I was thinking I don't think the string works anymore. It doesn't. He's supposed to pull the string and, and his mouth moves. He's supposed to talk. Um but yeah, yeah this don't is, let that go, dude. That's that's good stuff. This is um shh, don't tell anybody. This is for my mom. For yeah, Christmas. don't tell her. Her mom's always like, she she watches our YouTube sometimes, but she hasn't seen all our videos. Could she doesn't go on our YouTube very much. Could could he be like our new Cliff? Hi, hmm. I've got one question to ask everybody out there. Are you down I said, DTF? No. Down to Friday. He didn't talk like that. No. Hi, Hi I'm Howdy Diddy. I think he can't talk like that. I don't remember her. Buffalo Bob, Buffalo Bob. <laughs> call Mayor Buffalo Bob's guy. So yeah, these don't have a big resale value, but are y'all D T A M? He, he's really cute. He's got a hunchback. Well, he's he's also his stuffing isn't. He's Dowinger hump duty. <laughs> I think he needs he needs some stuffing fixed on him. He's like it's, slumped over, like. Arr. It's been a while. <laughs> and then this is for. Because have you ever bought or sold a game that you have to get from the comic book? Huh? That you have to get from the comic books? A game from the comic mm, books? Maybe. Oh, you mean like something you would mail away? Like order? Get? I don't know. I boy, I'd like to find one of them. Man, those those, those mail away been. toys, I think super are super hard. hard to find. Yeah, I, I don't have, know if there's many around. I I always wondered that, and a friend of ours has some of that stuff. Tom has some of those things that Marvel Comics used to sell, like T-shirts and. Uh, subscriptions to like uh, Friends of uh, of Mighty Marvel, Foom or whatever it was, uh, and um, uh, yeah, some of that stuff. But it's I've never seen it in a while. And then my last thing, Babushka Power. Yeah, it's an old press photo from some Pittsburgh newspaper. <laughs> um, I just thought it was cute because Babushka, you know. Yeah, Stasha. If you follow the, it, but it's this a... is this is the Pittsburgh Pirates fans. I guess that's something they did. Hmm. But it's it's. I just thought that was cool. It was a buck. The Pittsburgh. I paid Post. a buck for this photo. What the buck? What the buck? And my last thing was not from the flea market, but from today, I went to the um, Value World and picked up some uh, yeah, video Yeah, he, he took more shopping after we were done. Do you ever have shipping. trouble shipping oh. certain items? Well, where do we start with that? Oh, so sometimes I'll list your items, and then, and then I. Don't know how I'm gonna ship it. Like I'll I'll calculate the size and the weight, and then once it sells, I'm like, oh crap, 
I gotta get a big box for this thing. I gotta get more bubble wrap. I gotta get more styrofoam. Yeah, I mean, we're we're trying to get better at maybe not buying things that are too big or too heavy. But the the thing, but the reason with the, you buy like, the sewing machines and the typewriters, they sell. They sell, yeah. The sewing machines, typewriters that are larger, they do sell. You just have to make sure they're packed up good, and you need all the packing materials. The only way you wouldn't do um, that is if you looked at that typewriter and didn't even ask about it, because this is the problem with it. You see the typewriter land there. You know, you see it's a beautiful vintage typewriter, and you go, "How much is it?" And they say five dollars. You, you buy it like that, right? Then, no, no, no. Here's the problem. You, then you look back at that typewriter. It's not a typewriter anymore. It's two hundred dollars sitting there, and you're like, "Yes, okay, sure, five bucks. That's the problem." Well, like the if one never typewriter asked, I paid tempted. ten for, and it sold for two sixty nine. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's the reality. Is that when you see these typewriters or these big things certain ones certain ones not all, not all of them but certain ones what i'm saying you see the right ones you're not seeing a typewriter or weight or, or packaging difficulties you're seeing the value mm -hmm. you know what you and especially if so, they go ten dollars five dollars like yes i need to have if, if, if it's the right item i don't care what it is i well will pack it. it up and ship it because well there was it. a pachinko machine that we bought for like I think I paid five bucks five for bucks. it. And this thing was like the biggest. It was like three feet tall. It was a little. It was like a wall hanging 1970s pachinko machine. Heavy, awkward. Yeah, but I cumbersome. I packed that thing up and it I sold. I actually shipped it to Texas through FedEx. So. They paid seventy five for they, it. And, they paid like they paid like eighty bucks to ship to it. To ship it, how much did they? But it, sold, I, it sold for sixty five. They paid more to ship it than it did. And I think I, they paid like eighty bucks to ship it. But, but yeah. the person really wanted it. And you shipped it and then got there and no problem. Got there problems. fine, no problems, got good feedback. Yeah, crazy. So yeah, as I was, as I was making my purchase at the uh, at the Value World, I was only buying some videotapes and some DVDs, nothing just for me, pretty much. But I saw this thing behind the counter, I'm like, oh. So I did my I turn around, you know, I looked it up real quick, didn't know how much it was. And then when I got up there, I said, how much is that uh, Madame Mortis figure back there by... Um, it's by Mezco. Ooh. It's got the, 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 the packaging has some issues, but uh, they so want. So she's it. a fortune teller. Yeah, it's a fortune. I think it talks and everything, and they have a little wheel that spins around to show you your fortune, whatever. Anyway, Sorry about that, guys. We should wrap it up soon too. We've been talking over an hour. I didn't realize we were that long. That's cool. We were a bunch of yeah. We we talked. We answered questions. Pretty cool. Anyway, so yeah, this thing they wanted twenty bucks for it. I looked it up. The comps they sell for seventy dollars, fifty, like double my money. But this is one of those cases where you pay up, but with any, it, but it should sell for at least twice what you paid for it. So that's not bad. Cause you want, you know, the more sales you get, the, the better your account looks and the better you feel about being a seller. Yes. When stuff moves. I'm just looking through the jewelry I have over here off and the that's, side. And that's but... it for me right now. I, th I think that's it. Taco Stacks is watching. Hi what? Taco Stacks, we love your channel. <laughs> we just watched the episode uh, where he was at the, with all the toys and stuff, the yeah. auction. We have a celebrity watching. That's crazy. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, we, we really enjoy your channel. And uh, yeah, and uh, actually I did my own little, uh, oh, that's something else. I did oh my yeah, own he, little... he went junk picking today too after we were done with the flea market. He went out garbage hunting. I can't hunting. help it, you know, and some <laughs> of it has to be, you know, uh, you know, credited taco stacks. Oh uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a ton of stuff laying out in front of someone on someone's uh, lawn, or uh, tree lawn. And uh, I saw another picker there, you know, finishing up. So I just waited till, for him to be done and I'd jump in there. And I found a pair of shoes for you, uh, black leather men's shoes, old. Oh, cool. And then, um, but then my kind of stuff was there. More people's lives stuff. Tons of photo albums. I mean, I, what, you're going to... Oh, don't, vintage don't photos? Don't be mad. I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it definitely it looks like a lot of photo. They're the real old skinny ones, like from the 60s, maybe late 50s, on up through the 70s and maybe those 80s. Those are fun to look through. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, those are cool to look through. I've got, like, a t too many, maybe. But they're, they look... But who knows? I mean... Of course, you know, I'm hoping there's like some Goularty stuff or some big, who knows? Yeah, Co some local some Cleveland stuff. Local Cleveland TV stuff or like, you know, things like that. Well, what I did find uh, was a printout of Alan Freed, you know. Who Who's he, Alan Freed? He was the disc jockey from Cleveland who coined the, the phrase rock and roll. The did guy he really? Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't always remember names. Yeah, there, there's a Getty Images printout of him that was in there too. So that's interesting. I don't know why that's in there, but cool. it's entertainment related, Cleveland stuff. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, so I picked a bunch of that. The back of my car is full of that stuff right now. I need to get it out of there. Um, but yeah, we'll do again. Maybe we'll you do could a, do a separate video showing that. I'm gonna have to do a found video type of thing. What's Any? the worst that can happen if you sell it for twenty bucks? It says oh, that might have been from something else we were talking about. Yeah, he's buried in Lakeview. Yeah, we saw that. We've been there a bunch of times. Oh, Lakeview Cemetery. Yeah, he's got that the, place is so beautiful. Yeah, his uh, his tombstone's a big uh, jukebox. 
Remember? Oh, that's the one. That's Alan okay, Freed, yeah. now I know. Now I know. Yeah, yeah, that place is cool. Yeah, so robots, tea sets, Ricky Nelson paper. Whoa, he's look at Earl. All right with okay, that. Okay, sorry. Oh, and one, one. <laughs> this might have been sort of a, a harbinger of what I would find today on my way home from going out and buying a new microwave, which blew up last night. Um, this is a, from the flea market today. It's an old 50s photo album with 50s pictures of someone's Christmas. Oh, vintage Christmas photos. Yeah, that's really neat. And you can see some of the... T that's fun, too, is to look at these and see what kind of... What did uh, they get for Christmas? Of course, 50s. What else would a little boy want? They're 1950, actually. It's been dated. Uh, a he's cowboy a, a costume. Cowboy. Yeah, he's Woody from Toy Story. So it's all true. <laughs> He looks like it. That's yeah, cute. That's what, and the, oh, look. Oh, how much does this stuff work now, guys? Oh, those little, like, right on little yeah. cars and look bikes. Yeah, look how awesome that is. Yeah. So this is good for research, too, and just kind of get an idea to know what stuff is. Like that is cool. Mom on the kid bike. There's the kids on the bikes again. You know, little rascal. There's oh, the little bicycle with the basket. Him on his hog and on his Some ride. of those vintage bikes and little things like that are, like, Way collectible. This is great because it looks like they got, there's a train, you know, everyone with their, it's actually a Western set. Um, Uncle Brett. <laughs> it looks like they got a lot of snow that winter. Look at the kid shoveling snow Oh, there. snow. That's the four-letter word here. That's yeah. a bad word. But yes, We don't want snow here. I love no. stuff like this. I really do. It's I just, think East Coast uh, got more snow than us Ohio people. Right now, It's it's been really mild. It was actually sunny and... Like 50 degrees today. November 25th, 1950. As a kid, I had a bunch of six-inch Mark Soldier toys. Oh, yeah. But Mark something, stuff? something. I didn't check all. Well, I didn't read the I didn't, comment. Here's something I didn't show. It's, a, it's what's left of some uh, tin Mark's uh, truck or tractor. I don't know what this is. But this is only a dollar, so I thought maybe somebody would want it to refix or fix up or I don't know collect. or parts or repair yeah who knows people collect all kinds. as you know if you sell on eBay you really I'm always shocked at what people wind up buying that I put up there <laughs> you know but anyway so thank you guys for watching we're gonna wrap it up we're gonna try to do more videos during the week and then we're going to have another live show on our Facebook page the mummy of the monkey where we're gonna host the movie the dead matter yeah it's gonna and be it's... this Friday 10 p.m. yeah starring starring um big Chuck and some other awesome actors. Yes. Love that painting story, says John. Thank you, Mr. Molto. Thank you, guys. Yeah, maybe guys, we should do some more haunted stories and haunted things. Oh, yeah. That was, those are good questions. There's... We have, um, I, we did encounter another haunted thing. We but did. We're going to save it for yes. an upload that we do. because yeah, I, she I think, took video of it. I, I hope the video turned out. Maybe, oh, if it's but blurry, I, that would be cool. I did a video of a, of a haunt. Someone shared, um a haunted picture that they have it's kind of sad but yeah it's a portrait but yeah we're, we're gonna work on videos this week and get stuff prepared for our friday live show it's always you know how it is out there it's work 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 never work a dull work moment. work <laughs> but uh, thanks taco stacks for 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 watching and you yes know. thank you thank you guys hit the like button and we appreciate you and we'll see you out there on in the interwebs. Didn't we were, we were we not eating Taco Bell when we watched Taco Stacks earlier? We did. Actually, we were eating yeah. Taco Bell while watching a Taco Stacks video. And that that, that happens. I think often. I think you have to eat tacos yeah. while watching Taco it's Stacks. It's apropos. He anyway. does a lot of cool like garbage picking videos. Oh, it's amazing <laughs> stuff. The guys are the guys are a monster when it comes to that. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Monster Hustle.